Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Mackie. I'm Sid. And today we're going to take a rainy recovery day because it is raining in Tucson, which has not happened yet while we've been here. So we're going to take a day off and want to talk to you guys a little bit about recovery. But first, I want to tell you about a really cool partnership we've started with Psychological. A lot of you have left comments about the t-shirts that we've been wearing and so we decided to partner with them to do our own design, which Mackie is sporting right now. This is their take on our logo. They basically were just like, what are your favorite animals? And then they put this together. It's really funny. All of their stuff is super inspired, creative. All their designs are really good conversation starters because yeah. <laughs> you'll just have random people come up to you and be like, is that a like is that tiger, a tiger on kissing a, a kangaroo bike? on a bicycle? Um, <laughs> yes, it is. If you're not going to stop kiss, you could get yourself a taco riding a bike. This is <laughs> my favorite hoodie by far. Um, like you said, all their stuff is just really clever and bike themed and hilarious. So check it out. There will be a link below. And if you do get one of our t-shirts, a portion of the proceeds supports us. Which is awesome. As well as a awesome small business that is just creative and fun. So yeah, so yeah, check them check out. out. So back to recovery. As we mentioned, it is rainy and it has been raining for like a full day, which from what we hear is pretty much unheard of in Tucson. It's unusual and also obviously not good for the trail. So we are yes. not going to go out and ride and we needed a recovery day anyway because recovery is basically the most important part of training. Train hard recover harder, race hardest. And uh, that I think is a pretty good philosophy because if you're not recovering, you don't actually get the benefits of training. So basically you're just throwing your training away. Because training is basically your body adapting to a higher workload. And that adaptation happens during the recovery phase. So you break down your muscles and then they build up stronger. But if you just continue to break yourself down, you don't get stronger. And this is something that we see a lot with recreational mountain bikers. And I think mountain biking is particularly prone to it because it's so fun. Yeah, you know, you want to go ride I every day. I just want to go ride the bike. And I know a lot of you probably like have buddies that you ride with all the time and like ride groups. And it's hard to follow a training plan there because you want to just be able to have fun on every ride and unfortunately that is not always possible sometimes you have to take it easy to get those benefits yeah if your goal is to get stronger and faster on a bike you have to just be like i'm sorry i can't it's not gonna work like i have to take a recovery day because like sid was saying basically you break your muscles down and then when they they recover they actually recover to a stronger point than they were before you broke them down. And then if you break them down again and then recover again and break them down again, like you overall, it goes up. But if you just keep breaking them down without getting the recovery, it just like goes down and down and down and you get weaker. So it's that recovery that is what allows you to actually get stronger. So something that we see a lot with people who don't race seriously is that they end up riding in what we call the gray zone almost all the time. And mm -hmm. so the gray zone is that place where you're going hard, you know, you're working hard, but you're not going all out. So you're breaking yourself down, but you're also not getting maximal benefit from your training because you're not going super hard. And you might have a lot of time, like you, if you're doing like a lot of long rides, but no high intensity work and you're not recovering properly, you're never getting those rest days and you're never getting that high intensity training. So what you get instead is a lot of volume, but not much quality and not much progression because you're always in that gray zone. Yeah. And it's, you know, sense. it's, it's fun to ride, just like ride with people or ride on your own or whatever at kind of a comfortable pace all the time. That's fun. But if your goal is to get stronger and faster, it's not actually going to do it for you. Like, yeah, your body will get used to being on a bike. You'll probably be able to go longer, but if you actually want to get stronger, you have to have points of like high intensity and then days of recovery to let your muscles adapt to that high intensity work. Otherwise you'll, you'll keep being as fast as you are right now. Exactly. And yeah. for a lot of people, I think that means less volume than you might think. I mm -hmm. think a lot of people 
say like, oh, you guys are pro athletes, you must ride every day and for hours, <laughs> and you must ride like six hours a day. <laughs> and like, I think that's a huge misconception in that often I think pros, especially in something like enduro where it isn't, you know, we don't need to adapt to like riding our bike for 24 hours, like a 24 hour racer yeah. or something. Or so, like Tour de France where they're like on the bike for four or five, six hours right. every day. Like we're not doing that. And so for that reason, like our training volume is probably lower than a lot of you might think. And mm -hmm. that doesn't mean we don't go hard. In fact, it means we probably go harder, but we also rest more. We put together for you guys a list of five things you should be doing on your recovery days. And things Number that one, we try to do. That we try <laughs> yeah. to do. Number one is get lots of sleep. Uh, and that's so sleep. the night before, the night after. Naps. Naps. Um, sleeping is a big part of how your body recovers. So lots of it is going to make you recover more quickly and more effectively and feel better the next day. Be ready to go back to hard training. Yeah. Training is not possible without sleep. We rarely get less than eight hours of sleep. Yeah. We, we usually do, shoot is, for nine or more. It is a problem. And like, I definitely see it in my training very quickly mm -hmm. if I get less than eight hours of sleep or I get sick. Yeah. Um, or especially when, a couple days in a row. Yeah, like. when you're pushing your body, you, you need to be getting sleep. Okay, number two is active recovery. Basically, this means you're moving your body, but you're not stressing your muscles. You're stretching, maybe doing like light yoga, maybe swimming. Taking like, a walk. Maybe taking a walk. Like a um, yeah, 20, 30 minute walk just to like move things around, help flush out some of the lactic acid. A light recovery on the bike, some people really like to do. And um, I think that all depends on, like, you want something that's not stressful and, like, easy to do. So if it's a hassle to, like, get to somewhere that you can ride your bike, you don't want to be doing that on a recovery day. Go for a walk instead. Yeah. Um, but you do want to move a little bit on your recovery days. If you sit in the same position all day in your office, like, that's not great. <laughs> you will definitely be <laughs> really be sore the next day. Otherwise. Yeah. So number three is passive recovery. So active recovery, you are moving. Passive recovery... You are not moving. Some things that we like to do are wear compression clothing. We have compression tights. We've got some compression sleeves, which will just cover like the calf part of your legs. Um, some people do those like inflatable things. Elevated legs. Elevated legs. Yeah. yeah. We haven't tried those, but I think if you have access to it, like why the heck we not? <laughs> totally do it. Massage. Slight, if yeah, you can light swing massage it. or getting a massage. Foam rolling. Yeah. Might fall into well, active. That might Somewhere fall into between. active yeah. more, but yeah. Yeah, but passive recovery is you don't really have to do anything, and it's promoting blood flow, which will help make you less sore and help your muscle muscles recover. Number four is food and hydration. Obviously, you want to stay hydrated on your recovery days. You want to stay hydrated all the time, <laughs> ideally. Um, <laughs> but since you're taking a recovery day, you can actually focus on like, I'm going to drink such and such amount of water a day or do like a light electrolyte mix. Like Scratch Labs makes a daily mix. So it's not as or sweet. Any time hydration. So it's called any time yeah. hydration. It's not as sweet as like their um, active hydration, but it still gives you some of those electrolytes that help to rehydrate. I think the biggest thing with a recovery day is that you're consciously being good to your body on that day. You know, it's not just a day that you don't happen to be riding bikes. Yeah. It's a day that you're like, I'm gonna put good things in my body. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stay hydrated. I'm gonna take a nap. The other thing to remember, and this is something that a lot of people fall into is they're like, Oh, I'm not riding today. I shouldn't eat as much. And yeah. like, maybe you shouldn't eat as much. But you should, but you should too, still be you eating plenty. And, yeah, it's like yeah. you're not restricting calories because you're not riding. It's like you're not riding, but your muscles still need those calories to grow and adapt. And so you should still be eating. You should be eating really well. Smoothies are a great way to do this, to get the fruits in there. Salads, a sandwich with a ton of veggies on it. Good protein sources, yep. some chicken. Mm -hmm. Stir fry for dinner with a bunch Stir of veggies fry, in it. That's what yeah. we're gonna do tonight, I think. <laughs> Number five is minimize outside stressors. So I would say this is the hardest one because there's a huge temptation, especially if you're training hard, to save all your errands and all that other like life BS to deal with on your rest day. And, and we would never do that. <laughs> we definitely do this. This is the one that's the hardest the for time. us. All the time. It's because, you know, we train a lot and then we have a rest day. So it's like, oh, I guess we'll like get an oil change on the van and go grocery shopping and like 
do 20 other things and edit a video for YouTube <laughs> and like all this and all of a sudden the rest day is like stress like is our video gonna be done is it gonna upload so we've learned that you know if you have a day like that that you end up being super stressed for other reasons outside of riding that doesn't count as your recovery day take recovery another day. one in yeah. the whole scheme of things you'll be better off doing that than you will be just like jumping back into your training without the rest some other things that don't count as recovery days <laughs> include driving all day not flying recovery. on an airplane flying all day. on an airplane <laughs> not recovery, running around doing errands, any sort of big emotional stress kind of stuff. Dealing with family emergencies. Yeah, family emergencies. Going to the emergency room. Yeah. Those don't count. <laughs> None of these things, yeah, anything like that doesn't count yeah. as a recovery day. So take another one. Obviously it is possible to have too much recovery. I think that's what you call under training versus <laughs> yeah. over training. I think mountain bikers, however, swing high to the overtraining mm -hmm. side of the spectrum. And that is because we all love our sport and we love to do it. So we're not like being dragged out there to train. So especially if you're trying to like maximize your ride time because you're working eight hours a day, if you're going to sneak in a ride after work, make it a short ride that's high intensity because mm -hmm. then you're like really stressing those muscles and then the next day focus don't ride recovery. like focus yeah. on recovery you know you get back from work and like try to just relax take a little while that's a good way to alternate that as opposed to like going out every single day for an hour at the same intensity that you're just going to get stuck in that gray zone that Sid was talking about. So those are five tips for having a good successful recovery day which will prepare you for hard training the next day. Thanks for tuning in. We will be back on Monday with our next winter training in Arizona vlog. And it's gonna be a really good it's one. It's gonna be a good one. There's some exciting stuff that happens. <laughs> um, anyway, we will see you guys next time. Make sure you subscribe, tell your friends, get them to subscribe. We'll see you soon. Cheers to an awesome recovery day. Yes. <laughs>